Published 1152 Eastern Standard Time, the 27th of January 2018. Updated 1352 Eastern Standard Time, the 27th of January 2018. Glenn Murray spent several hours this week answering questions following his arrest on suspicion of a 1.1 million pounds tax fraud. And he answered a few more here with a last-minute winner to silence those fans who had mocked his second-half introduction. Officers from HMRC arrested the Brighton striker and his wife at their home on Tuesday morning before seizing business records and computers. The couple were later released and the investigation is ongoing. Manager Chris Hewton, however, said he had no hesitation in naming Murray in the squad for the trip to the North East, despite the attention caused by his arrest. Glenn Murray came off the bench following a bad week off the pitch, and secured Brighton's FA Cup victory in injury time Murray wheels away in celebration after his scrappy winner, which bounced off him and in following Marcus Sutner's cross Murray. Second right, was arrested over an alleged tax fraud this week but was back among the goals against Middlesbrough. The 34-year-old was the target of a few choice chants when he was introduced on 72 minutes with the game goalless. But those same supporters had no comeback as Murray cocked his ear in their direction following his late strike. The 34-year-old, though, ignored the fact it had been a fortuitous effort. George Friends attempted clearance smashing off Murray's standing knee before flying beyond goalkeeper Darren Randolph. It was Brighton's first goal on the road in more than 11 hours. Hewton said, Goals are hard to come by at moment. We needed that. It was going to take a special goal, a mistake or a bit of luck and we got that, of Murray, he added, I had no hesitation in including him. Glenn has been focused as normal, with all strikers you want them in there anticipating a mistake and Glenn did what he does best, it had all been rather tedious until that point and if ever in FA. Cup tie made the case for settling matches on the day then this was it, for neither club would have been too enthralled at the prospect of a replay given their priorities lie elsewhere. Tony Pullis Middlesbrough are fighting to get in the Premier League, Hewton's Brighton are fighting to avoid dropping out of it. Armour Traoré had the best attempt of the first half when the Middlesbrough winger's effort crashed into the crossbar. Traoré reacts after going close with his rifled shot in the FA Cup fourth round game between Middlesbrough and Brighton Borough were the better of the two sides for much of the game, but in the end they crashed out of this season's FA Cup. Barham Kyle and Traoré collide in the middle of the pitch during a scrappy, tense affair at the Riverside Stadium. To up shot was a contest, if you can call it that, with no sense of occasion, no nerves, no fear of losing. It was just another match everyone could do without. How sad. Burroughs Adama Traoré tried his best to liven a state affair, but the winger's trickery was at odds with the rest of a game which, at times, had the feel of a pre-season friendly. Indeed, Brighton only showed ambition to win it in the last ten minutes, such was their desire not to add another fixture to their calendar. You get the impression a defeat is preferable to a draw in this competition these days, although Hewton later protested otherwise. There is, however, little chance of Brighton repeating their journey to the 1983 FA Cup final, given they made seven changes here in a one point above the relegation zone after a run of five without a win. Pullis, meanwhile, was perhaps relieved that he has avoided a 650-mile round trip a week on Tuesday. We are fully focused on one thing now and that is getting in the top six, he said, telling Lee. We have 18 games to go and we have to perform with a consistency. Middlesbrough boss Tony Pullis, clearly frustrated with his side's play, steps out of his technical area and onto the pitch. Middlesbrough defender Ryan Shotton tries to get round Brighton striker Toma. Hem to reclaim possession Shotton was again in action midway through the first half when he jumped to win a header against Brighton's jury Skarlacki. I'm not going to spend any more of Steve Gibson's money. If I do anything it will be loans. He spent enough money on this squad anyway. We created the chances here but didn't take them and Lady Luck has not shone on us in the last couple of minutes. Borough had been the better team in the first half. Traoré attacked the byline on 20 minutes and drew back for Ashley Fletcher but his radar malfunctioned. A first-time effort sliced well wide. Home defender Daniel Ayala did find the target on the half-hour mark, connecting with a Martin Braithwaite corner, but his header was held by former Newcastle stopper Tim Krill on the goal line. Ryan Shotton's long throw-in was causing Brighton problems. It was as good as a corner when the fullback dispatched into the penalty area, and from one of his arrow deliveries Patrick Bamford swiveled to hook an overhead kick onto the roof of the net. But the best chance of the half came the way of Traoré as he burst clear from Johnny Housen's pass. 
The angle was against the Spaniard but he took aim for the bottom corner and was unlucky when Krull's fingertips diverted the ball onto the upright. Brighton twice went close after the break through Barham Kyle, forcing a double save from Rand Loaf before hammering narrowly wide, and the tie looked to be headed for a predictable stalemate until Murray's intervention. After a taxing week he would have enjoyed the relief of his goal, Johnny Howson, left puts in a tackle on Kyle as both sides try to stake their claim on a tight FA Cup match on Saturday Dale Stevens, a Sora in the last round against Crystal Palace, chases down Martin Braithwaite, but manages to foul him Middlesbrough's fans lift flags and banners in the stands as they cheer their side on in the FA Cup fourth round tie.